are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. I'm Marcus. He's Lane, and we are previewing the Cowboys Week 9 game against the Denver Broncos. A big one for the Cowboys. Well, not really, but uh, <laughs> it is a game, I guess. Uh, thank you guys for making us your first listen every single day. Lane, let's just jump right into it. How are you doing today? Good. I'm excited. It's Friday. I'm excited we have a fun opponent this week that I don't feel like we have to worry too much about, but we oh, cannot man. get complacent about oh. as well. It's I just, can it's already just, hear the Lockdown Broncos guys playing this at the start of their podcast on Monday. Like, oh, the Cowboys were overlooking us. And uh, listen, look how confident they were. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I'm we're glad right. to provide whatever content I can for the rest of the network. That's for sure. So Yeah, we're not afraid. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about this matchup. Uh, Cowboys, Broncos. I want to start with the Cowboys offense because we do have some injury news. Yeah. C.D. Lamb sprained his ankle on Wednesday, was limited, did not practice on Thursday. It sounds like he is going to practice on Friday. I, it doesn't sound like the team is super concerned, right? Um, we also have Alvari Cooper dealing with a hamstring injury. We've got CD Lamb, or excuse me, Michael Gallup coming back from calf injury. We got a new left tackle. Uh, just how healthy is this Cowboys offense going into Week Nine? <clears throat> I mean, they're, they're actually probably about the same. It, it, it's all like it seems like it's washed out, right? I, I do think, you know, just kind of reading the tea leaves on the injury reports and the and the, the tone of the coach and the people that have talked about it, that we probably will actually, despite all this kind of negative sounding injury news, we probably will get the debut or not the debut, I guess the return of the three headed monster. Uh, uh, the, all three wide receivers, I'm hoping, will play this Sunday. Uh, it sounds like, you know, even with uh, Amari's hamstring, he sounded like he's actually healthier than he has been in previous weeks because uh, it's o- it seems like it's only the hamstring now <laughs> that he's dealing with. So that's good. Uh, yeah, CD's rolled his ankle. So, I mean, we're calling it an ankle sprain, but obviously ankle sprain is one of those things that has such a wide spectrum of what falls under an ankle sprain. Um, and then, you know, obviously Gallup coming back from the calf injury. Uh, it sounds like he's been working his way back into practice, but it sounds like all three should be able to make it. I think the questions we're going to have now, we can talk about this, is what the offensive line is going to look like because that's, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a reshuffle there with Tyron Smith uh, potentially sitting this game out with Bone Spurs. Yeah, let's go ahead and dive into that because I think that's the most fascinating thing. Yeah. We were talking about on Wednesday the possibility of the Cowboys moving Lyle Collins, the left tackle, keeping Terrence Steele at right tackle. But they did the opposite, and it's actually yeah. a little surprising to me. Dak Prescott uh, told us, I believe it was on Thursday, that Terrence Steele is going to start at left tackle. Lyle Collins is going to go back to right tackle. So what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are that they're trying to find a way to, to uh, politically get Lyle Collins back onto the starter and right tackle and that they can't uh, with a straight face tell us that Terrence Steele should be starting over Tyron Smith once Tyron Smith gets back and healthy. That's That's literally what I think is happening. Is that they 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 know that they want Leo Collins to play right tackle, and I, I I guess it makes sense if you feel confident about Terrence Steele playing left tackle, which honestly like we didn't feel super confident about Terrence Steele playing any tackle before. So I, I don't really I guess I I don't really feel that nervous about him moving back over to left tackle. It's not like he didn't get a ton of reps about, uh, at it in training camp. He did. Uh, I think this gives you Leo Collins back at his starting position. Uh, and then it gives you a built-in, uh, not excuse, but uh, 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 a very clear way to get things back to the best five on the field without insulting the guy who came in and did a fantastic job as your as your backup uh, or as your kind of a spot starter while you were missing Leo Collins. All right, so here's my thoughts on this a little bit. I think Terrence Steele has played left tackle more recently than Lyle Collins. Um yeah, he even definitely. did so a little bit more in training camp this year. Yeah. Uh, he ha- also just has way more experience in college. Like Terrence Steele yes. had like a thousand pass rush or pass blocking snaps at left tackle. Maybe they just feel like he's more comfortable doing that, even despite playing right tackle over the last two years. And maybe it's something as simple as, well, if Terrence Steele is playing left tackle, we might be able to hide him a little bit more than having him at right tackle and Lyle Collins at left tackle. I don't know. I, 
I'm not opposed to it. It's just it's it's interesting the, the decision they decided to go. But I do think you're probably right. It's probably more of a political thing of okay, Collins, now you got a chance to earn your job back. Go out there and play well. If you can keep it for the rest of the season, you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, I think look, they clearly wanted to do two things. One, they wanted to give Lil Collins his job back eventually. But two, they clearly couldn't just. I think it's bad for the locker room, and I understand why they did it. Er, uh, Terrence Steele has done everything right, everything right. You know, he everything. has been a hard worker. He came into the off-season program. He really, really took great strides to improve himself over the year. Lael Collins has done several things wrong, very and, wrong. And more importantly and, for Steele, he's played pretty well at right. Yeah, tackle. and that's like, that's the thing. If he was a disaster at right tackle, but he worked really hard. It's a different conversation. Yeah. He's given her four pressures over the last four weeks. Yeah, when you've play, when you've worked as hard as he has, and then played as admirably as he has, it's hard to take him off the field because of what it will do to your locker room. You know, like it's not a great look to say, "Hey, this guy's done everything we've asked for him and yeah. played well, and we're pulling him." Like that's not good for the relationship between the coaches and and the players. So I think this is a way to give you cover for that. I mean. Look, you have to deal with the reality that there are politics in the locker room about playing time. So, yeah. you know, this is the best way to kind of squash all of that while making sure that eventually you're getting your best five on the field. I want to talk more about the Cowboys offense against this Broncos defense. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about McDonald's. This episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place for to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family from the community can come together. A big thank you to all of our friends at McDonald's for always being there. So head to your local McDonald's today, refuel and reconnect, and get a sausage McGriddle with a little extra salt, mm. the Jerry Jones style, right? Like that's no. it's key. Uh, why don't you go ahead and do the, the jingle for us, Landon, since I know ba, you love it so ba, ba, ba. I'm loving it. I love the jingle, so that's the it's Amazing. easy for me to do. I, I, let me, real quick, I'll just add in. Please do not add salt to your sausage McGriddle. I, 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 I beg. It makes it taste better. I will say that. I, I, I love a sausage McGriddle with extra salt. It's very, very good. Man, put the little hash brown they give you in there. Slide it right inside. It's amazing. Good lord. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> talking about uh, the Cowboys' offense, we're back. Uh, I know we got a little sidetracked. Uh, you, you, you should have said that the Cowboys offense is actually pretty salty uh, as of late. So uh, there, there you go. That's, <coughs> there you go. Not bad. Um, Vic Fangio, the head coach for the Broncos, not really a heavy blitz guy. I mean, a lot of times it's a four man front. Occasionally we'll bring an inside backer or a two, but what do you expect from him in this game? Because their pass rush is basically non-existent with Von Miller gone. And Bradley Chubb trader Bradley Chubb on the injured reserve list. You know, it's I I, I was on the, the the hit this morning with the WFAA, and if you guys are local to Dallas, please check please check me out. Uh, on every Friday morning, we do in the hits on the midday show, and 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 one of the things I was talking about is you know, it's going to be similar to what we faced uh, against the Chargers. You know, it's going to be a lot of two shell. It's going to be. Uh, uh, you know, it, 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 Fangio obviously has a coaching tree, and Brandon Staley definitely falls squarely under that coaching tree. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the difference here is that when we faced uh, the Chargers, they had the outside players on the defensive line to kind of get a pass rush, or at least Joey Bosa, right? Uh, that that could that could cause some problems on the outside, uh, but their inside was weak. Uh, and they didn't have all the players to kind of keep up on the inside. I think it's the opposite for the 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 uh, the Broncos right now, where yeah. they have some solid in interior guys. You know, Draymond Jones, uh, uh, Purcell, yeah. uh, Shelby Harris. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they don't have any pass rushers now because of obviously trading away Von Miller and Chubb being out. So uh, I think it's actually. The results may be the same, though. I think the Cowboys probably need to, you know, find a way to uh, stabilize the offense. By they're going to have success running the football, uh, and I think that they're going to have success inside with tight ends because their their linebacker crew is certainly not worth uh, or is not, you know, up to the task necessarily of keeping track of all the players the Cowboys have that they can deploy in the middle of the field. It's ironic that the Cowboys are potentially getting their trio of wide receivers back this week because they're probably facing maybe the best 
cornerback core, at least in name, uh, mm -hmm. that they've faced so far uh, this season. So I anticipate that Fangio, per usual, is not going to allow the Cowboys' fireworks to beat him. He's not going to. So, he's not going to want all the deep passing. He's going to try to keep it all in front of him and make the Cowboys kind of march down. That's the my assumption as well. But I was really interested in the Broncos' defensive coordinator. I got to make sure I get his name right. It's Ed Donatel, I believe, is how you say his last name. Uh, he said the key to stopping the Cowboys is loading up to stop the run and forcing the receivers to win one on one. Okay. okay. He, he believes, <laughs> he said, we have the best cornerbacks in football and we can handle the receivers one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and maybe they do. Um, obviously, they we like Patrick Sertan a lot in the draft. They have Kyle Fuller. Uh, they're getting Ronald Darby back. So they have three guys that they like. Uh, I do want to remind you what the last time, what happened to Ronald Darby um, when he played Amari Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> he went for 200 yards and was out for the season the next year. Um, I, I just... <laughs> I would not be surprised if that is the strategy of, hey, we're going to load up in the box and you're going to have to beat us down the field. Um, I think the Cowboys are okay with that if that is the goal. Yeah, I think that's a quick death for them, honestly. like, I mean, Because here's the problem. Pass rush and coverage are, is a sliding scale, right? Like you need uh, – you, you can't – just exclusively have great coverage and no pass rush that doesn't work you can't exclusively have pass rush and no coverage that's yeah. not going to work you need a, a a mixture of both it could definitely be way on one side yeah. or way on the other side of talent if you want to do that but you need both to function the greatest cover corner in the world can't cover amari cooper for four seconds and if no. you if your pass rush isn't getting home and Dax just Bobbin, 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 getting out of the pocket, changing the angles. You know, Sertan could be the second coming of Deion Sanders combined with his dad and still not cover Amari Cooper that long. Yeah. You know, so I think the, the problem they're going to run into is that ultimately, how long is it going to take, uh, uh, you know, Jonathan Cooper to, to get past Lael Collins? It's probably going to take a while. So uh, I think if they want to do that, I understand the thought process like you, you – you need to take a chance against a, a talented offense, and 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 this is a, a way that you may be more uniquely suited to mm -hmm. attack the Cowboys' offense than a lot of other teams are because you of their cornerback depth. But I, I also think that you know, look, if the Cowboys <laughs> beat a blitz or score on their own and then beat a blitz, and they go up fourteen nothing in like the second quarter. I mean, it's probably start time to talk about this Denver offense because I don't know that they're going to be able to recover yeah. from that. I, I will just say I've got a feeling this is going to be a middle of the field game for the Cowboys for a couple of different reasons. Yeah, um, their linebackers—they've been just decimated by linebackers. It's been really unfortunate. They traded for Kenny Young last week. He played almost every snap for them this week. Uh, Baron Browning, who's been inactive for most weeks, uh, third round pick from this year's draft, he's going to be starting at the other linebacker spot. And, I mean, we talked about Baron Browning a ton on this podcast. Yeah. He's a linebacker yeah. that's really good at coming forward, right? Like a run-stopping. Mm -hmm. uh, he's big. But in coverage is where you can get him a little bit. So I think this is a Dalton Schultz game. I yeah. think this is a, a Tony Pollard screen game where uh, maybe even Tony Pollard just on swing routes. Put Baron Browning one-on-one -on -one with, with Tony Pollard and see what he can do. The safeties are really good. Kareem Jackson, Justin Simmons. My only fear for the Cowboys offense in this one is, is it one of those games where you get some tip passes and that kind of stuff? Because you are probably going to be seeing a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage. If if you're not beating them one-on-one -on -one and you do get a couple, tip, couple tip passes, that's really the only way the Cowboys can probably be slowed down. But other than that, the Cowboys should have a lot of success in this one. Yeah, I mean, it's really going to be interesting to see how they execute their game plan. I mean, uh, you know, Fangio's a big guy on trying to disguise things, maybe just not giving this little looks. Even if he wants to try to play with more men in the box, uh, which, you know, maybe they do. Uh, but I have a feeling that they're going to try to, like, rotate late, you know, I, I, because they're going to want to give mostly – they're going to want to give shell looks and then drop a, a safety in to add that extra man to the box. Or they're going to try to attempt – to steal gaps. That's a big Fangio thing is just, is, is assigning kind yeah. of a one and a half gap situation on slants and that sort of online slants and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, I just don't know that they have the horses, you know, to kind of run this race, unfortunately for them. And, 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 and yeah, like you said, the middle of the field, because, it, because they're going to be ro rotating down from two high looks, 
and, and it's going to put a lot of pressure of of you know kind of run uh run assignment and pass assignment on several plays for their linebackers who again like you mentioned aren't isn't exactly the most talented group in the first place it's just a lot of pressure to put yeah. on on their interior players and, and the cowboys already create such strong c- conflicts there uh like i said I, I understand them wanting to try something new or attempting to you know kind of lev- get away from their game plan to leverage what they have to try to take on the cowboys in a different way yep. uh but if it doesn't work it's 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 a high risk high reward uh, uh scenario with if they try to run, play that game plan the cowboys could really really burn them early and, and like i said if they burn them early uh, and you make that denver offense one dimensional it's going to be really ugly for, for the Broncos. Let's talk about this offense. So Denver, I mean, Denver's been uh, having a hard time keeping everybody healthy on this team, but um, they get Jerry Judy back, and that's a big one because that's Teddy Bridgewater's favorite target. He gets open, and Bridgewater can deliver the ball on time. That's a matchup I'm curious to see. But Garrett Bowles, their left tackle, their best offensive lineman by far, he's not playing in this one. Noah Fant is on the COVID-19 list. He's not playing – uh, how do you think the Cowboys match up against this offense? Well, I hate to say this, but I'm pretty sure that it's Cam Fleming that is going to be starting for for them at left tackle, I think. And uh, if that's the case, then, uh, yeah, it, it could be a long day for Cam. Well, I'm it's either sure Cam that... Fleming or Cameron Anderson, either player not very good. Yeah, it's, the, the Cams are not as good as, as the Connors. Let's put it that way. Uh, <clears throat> so – uh, yeah, I, I, either way, I think Randy Gregory is likely to have a, a, a big day uh, as a pass rusher if he has to face them yep. in passing situations. Um, it, look, I mean, they, they're they going to have a struggle to try to keep this game in any kind of balance. And, and, and if they get into a situation where they're in a negative game script uh, and they're having to throw the ball with Teddy Bridgewater – it, it's they have great players on the outside, there's no doubt. But that combination of Teddy Bridgewater uh, and – quarterback pressure because of a bad offensive line it, i've seen that song before uh, i see that i've seen that movie before it's it's not it's not pretty for them so um they you know look they de- are they able uh, to create big plays i think so Cortland son jerry judy these are guys who are legit players in this league they are threats um and I, I think the cowboys happen to actually match up with them pretty well just like i think sutton is is a good matchup for for Diggs and I think Jerry Judy and Brown is an interesting matchup and I think they can actually flop back and forth and, and, and have some success as well uh but I just think that they don't have they have the horses on the outside horses thank you uh they have the horses on the outside but they're very uh, proud of that one aren't you I'm very proud of that one yes. <laughs> uh, 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 it's a total accident they have the horses on the outside uh but but uh you know ultimately you still have to deliver the football and uh, it's it's if it's going to be a short passing game, they probably aren't going to be able to move the ball enough to score points. If they're going to take huge swaths down the field, they're probably going to face some fumbles and some tax, tackles behind yeah. the line, some sacks because they don't have the offensive line to hold up for that long. So it's just an ugly it's it's an ugly mix for the for the Broncos at this point. Now, where Bridgewater is really good is getting the ball out on time and in yeah. rhythm and on short to intermediate passes. So if the Cowboys are playing, let's say a softer cover 3 or cover 2 and just daring him to put together 10 12 play drives, that's actually where he thrives. And that's not the strategy I would like to see the Cowboys use here. I would rather dare Bridgewater to throw the ball down the field and hey, if he hits on two of them, fine. Your offense is right back on the field. I, I I think the worst case is allowing Bridgewater to use a ball control style of offense, short passing game, because I do think they can have some success there. I just, I, I, I don't know. I, I want to get to the receivers because that's the fascinating part to me. I think Trevon Diggs is going to follow Jerry Judy. I don't think that's that the sense. smart play. I think he should follow Corton Sutton because he has more size and let Anthony Brown cover uh, Jerry Judy, who is a little bit quicker, a little bit faster. What are your thoughts on that? I think I think you're right on the matchup side of it. I think that Judy is more of a threat, and that's likely why they're probably thinking about having uh, Diggs cover him. But I think as far as if you're asking who the better matchup is, I think Diggs is a great matchup for Southern. Um, and I think and, yeah. I also think Diggs, the two Alabama guys are going to want to go against each other, right? Probably. Um, that's yeah, gonna... I mean that's the thing is that you know he does have a ton of experience against Jerry Judy, so maybe there's some value there. Uh, but so does in, Judy. You know, you know. Fair. Yeah, it's a two-way street for sure. Um, 
I think that it's going to be interesting to see how all of that plays out because, you know, they, they don't, like I said, it's going to have to be a short intermediate game. And, and I understand what you're saying that that's, that's definitely what Teddy Bridgewater does better. Uh, but that's not the best way to, for them to win the football game. You know, it's because it, I, even, even if it becomes uh, allowing Jerry Judy, uh, I'm sorry, Teddy Bridgewater to kind of play that, you know, uh, uh, short passing game, yep, yep. making making him move it slowly up and down the field. Um, I I I think Dak is better than I, I like Dak. If, if if both teams are doing that, I still like our chances to win because Dak is so much better at even that part of his game than than uh, than yeah. than Bridgewater is. I, I just don't know that they have a path to victory consistently with this offense. That doesn't, uh, you know, include big plays and or turnovers on defense uh, that that gets their ball back with short fields. Where the Cowboys should really dominate in this game is against the run. They just they can run the ball okay. It just depends on the game. But without, <laughs> excuse me, without Bowles, that's a big yeah. loss. Uh, Mike Munchak is one of the better offensive line coaches in the NFL. I expect he'll have the unit playing fine. Um, the Cowboys need to stop the run. They they have got to force the Broncos to get third and six, third and sevens, if they want to get off the field. And I, I do have some uh, some belief that they will do that. They've had a lot of success against Pat Shermer in the past, who I yeah. don't think is the most creative offensive mind in the world. Um, I think they'll be okay. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to give you our game predictions in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys to go to Bet Online. The Cowboys are currently 10 and a half point favorites in this game. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile site to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code LOCKED ON to receive your bonus. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. And while you're betting on the Cowboy Bronco game, you should do so eating a, a, a built Bar. You know how good built Bars are. <laughs> it's hard to even explain it. It's real chocolate with amazing flavors. It's just a great combination of low calories, high protein, and low sugar with no crazy additives. Best of all, they taste fantastic. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your next box at BuiltBar.com. All right, Landon, prediction time. Who do you have and why? I'm taking the over on Built Bar, first of all. Uh, <laughs> good call. Always uh, a good call. Always a good call. Uh, I'm uh, I'm picking the Cowboys. I mean, I think this is a game that, you know, complacency is the biggest enemy with the Cowboys here. They need they, – they are the more talented team. They have a much more talented quarterback. I think this defense is – uh, um, is the str- the Denver defense is the strongest part of this team, and they are are kneecapped. You know, they they don't have the pass rush that they they're normally expecting. Obviously, without Chubb, obviously without Von Miller, um, I don't. I think the interior of their defense is good, but I don't think it's it's good enough to necessarily uh, destroy or just completely disrupt what the Cowboys want to do on offense. Uh, I think that the the Denver defense has pieces. There's no doubt about yeah. that. That they aren't enough of a full set to kind of completely stop this offense that, you know, the Cowboys offense is playing at borderline historic levels. They, you know? they just so, don't have the guys in the front seven. The secondary is really good. And that's, that's what makes me a little nervous, but man, I, sure. if, if the Cowboys can run the ball at all in this game, the Broncos are going to be in such a bind. Yeah. And they will be able to run the ball because the, 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 the Broncos don't really have any answers, you know, on the second level, they don't really exactly. have any answers on the edge. I watch for a lot of power, watch for a lot of wide zone. They're going to get the ball out on the edges they're going to produce big plays in the run game, and and if they if they start producing big plays in the run game, that this is this game's going to be over uh, pretty quickly because if they you know it's just like the it's like the Chargers game, and like yeah. I said, it's they're gonna I mean I don't despite what they may be saying if, if, about trying to get you know the, the, to to line up and stop these wide receivers, I don't know that I believe it. I, well, I, I just and, think that. And here's the thing about ahead. their interior defensive line. They do have some guys, Shelby, yep. or Shelby Harris, yep. Draymond Jones, good players, but that's also where the Cowboys are at their strength, right? Yep. They have Connor Williams and Zach Martin. They're going to have Collins on that right side now, and Collins is a fantastic run player. Yeah, They're just going to be able to bully them a little bit. And if the running backs do get to the second level, I think that's where they can have a lot of success. Um, the I just want to mention the Broncos secondary. By name, it's really good, but Kyle Fuller got benched because yeah. he did not play well. Uh, yeah. Ronald Darby is coming back from an injury. Their best secondary guy all season long has been Bryce Callahan, their slot corner. He's not playing in this game. He's out. 
Uh, so they're, they don't know what to do in the slot. I've heard some things that it might be Ronald Darby coming and playing in the slot, which that's just a bad matchup for whoever that Cowboys. is. Cowboys. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a good matchup for the Cowboys. If it's CD Anybody Lamb, who has a star on his helmet and they're playing right. Ron, Ronald Darby, they're about to have a career day probably. Right. right. I'm going to pick the Cowboys. I know I rarely, rarely do that on the show, Lana. But I will say, that I think this game is going to be closer than what people anticipate. I don't see a... 37 to 17 game like we've had earlier this no. season. I, I think it's going to be 27 to 21, something like that. Is that fair? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think I picked 28 to 21 if I'm not mistaken. So, and I'm pretty sure I've picked that the last three weeks in a row if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, it's going to be not a huge scoring game because like I said, I just don't think that they're going to allow that. Um, so, uh, I, I, but I think the Cowboys will control the game and, and, and just kind of have the dictation of, of how the game flow is going. I, even though it's funny as I really feel like you're going to be able to tell in 10 minutes in this game, how it's going to go, because if the Cowboys jump out to a quick lead, let's say it's 10, nothing, or it's 10 to three, that's a game script. The Cowboys are just going to win 99 times out of a hundred, right? Like if they get a lead on teams, they're almost going to be impossible to stop. But if they let Denver ha- kind of hang around, much like That's the it. way Minnesota did last week against Dallas, right? Where, hey, this is still a game three minutes left in the third quarter. That's where I think Denver will have a chance. But this yeah. C- Cowboys getting in a positive game script is going to be bad for Denver. That's all I'd say. Yeah, I, I think that's the only path to victory for Denver is that they can keep it close all the way throughout the game and then uh, just put themselves in a position to – you know, find a way to win at the end. I mean, even then, like Dak is so good at in the game situations. I still like the Cowboys, but uh, yeah, I would agree that that's the game script that they have the highest percentage of chance of win. Do you know the last time the Cowboys beat the Broncos? It's been a while. It's been a long time. I mean, I they don't play each other very often, right? So it's remember the game. The last years. time they played was against. Uh, it was in Denver. It was the game where Dak threw the interception to a keep to lead right at the end of the game. And people are calling out Zeke's effort on one of the interceptions. It's been a while. Um, yeah. The 2013 game was the shootout game. 1995 it was, game. was the last time the Cowboys beat wow. Denver Broncos. So That's crazy. Um, this has been a year so far of revenge for the Cowboys. You know, against the Vikings. We um, talked about that, right? It's, it's like, good. it's like, it's like, Oh, settling the settling all debts uh, yes. uh, season for the Cowboys, right? It's like, the Patriots uh, in New England. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It'd be a nice way to kind of beat this one. I know the Broncos aren't as good as they were the last couple of times the Cowboys played them, but this is a game that would be nice to win. Uh, they Listen, I'll, I keep saying this every week. If the Cowboys win this game, I'll really start to believe in them because this is a game they should win against a team that's very competent, but you need to win. Um Let's see what happens. These were the excited. these are the kind of games that good Cowboys teams in the past have struggled with, right? Is is games that they should have won. They Early should starts. win. And, it, and yep. this is yeah, and this is the kind of thing that good teams do. They take care of business when they are supposed to win. It doesn't have they to be. Go win. It doesn't have to be a gorgeous win either. Like if they no. get a, if they pull away in the last four minutes, that's fine too. It just no. get a win, right? Absolutely. That's all. Absolutely. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in and always making us your first listen. Uh, Check out the Locked On Broncos podcast this week. They did a lot of really good shows. You can go back and listen to them. We had a crossover podcast that I believe is coming out today on their show. Uh, Cody's been doing some good work over there. Uh, You can follow the show at Locked On Cowboys. Find us wherever you get your podcast. He's Landon. I'm Marcus. Enjoy week nine. We'll see you guys next time.